Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome to the physics course. The course code is SP015. For this course, student needs to study up to 12 topics or chapter for this semester. This course will help students to acquire knowledge and problem solving skills in basic physics required to pursue in higher education. Today, I would like to introduce the first topics in the physics course, which is the physical quantities and measurement. These topics consist of three subtopics, which are dimensions of physical quantities, scalar and vector quantities, and significant figures and uncertainties analysis. The third subchapter will not covered in this lecture since the subtopics will be covered in practical work. Okay, let's start with the first subtopic which is the dimensions of physical quantities. The learning outcome is to define the dimension. Define the dimension. What is the dimension stand for? Dimension is defined as a technique or method, technique or method, which the physical quantity can be expressed in terms of combination of basic quantities. Alright. So, table 1 shows the dimension of basic quantities. We have the basic quantity, mass, length, time, electric current, temperature, amount of substance. Okay, look at the first one. The mass. The symbol for the mass is capital of M. Unit is kilogram. The length, the symbol for the length is capital letter of L. Unit is meter. The time symbol is capital of T. Unit is second. Electric current symbol is A or I. Capital of I. The unit is ampere. Temperature symbol is theta. The unit is Kelvin. For the amount of substance. Symbol is N, unit is mole. The dimension can be treated as algebraic quantities through the procedure that is called the dimensional analysis. Why we need to use the dimensional analysis? It is used to, the first one, to determine the unit of the physical quantity. The second one to determine whether a physical equation is dimensionally correct or not by using the principle of homogeneity. What is principle of homogeneity? It says that principle of homogeneity is to examine whether the dimension on the left hand side equals with the dimension on the right hand side. The third one to derive or construct a physical equation. Note that the dimension of dimensionless constant is 1. Example, if we have the number 2 here, so the dimension for the number 2 is 1, and it also happens with the, let's say, reflective index. So, the dimension for the refractive index also 1. Dimensions cannot be added or subtracted. Now, let's go for the subtopic 1.1, which is the definition of dimension. Now, let's go to the second subtopic, which is the scalar and vector. For this subtopic, the linear comes 
to define scalar and vector quantities. To state the physical meaning of dot or scalar product, to state the physical meaning of cross or vector product. Now look at the definition of scalar and vector. The scalar quantity is defined as a quantity with magnitude only. Example, mass, time, temperature, pressure, electric current, work, energy, power, and etc. Whereas, vector quantity is defined as a quantity with both magnitude and direction. Example, displacement, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, electric field, magnetic field, and etc. Now look at the scalar or the product. The form of the dot or scalar product is vector A dot vector B equals to A bracket B cos theta or equals to B bracket A cos theta. Now, the physical meaning of scalar product Look at the figure 1.2a. If we have the two vectors there, the vector A and vector B here, and it has the angle theta in between those two vectors. First of all, we need to draw the line from B to the A, and then particular and then we have the component that b cos theta yeah b cos theta okay <coughs> now the b cos theta here is the component of b parallel to a so for the physical meaning of scalar product Let's say we have the vector A dot vector B equals to A bracket component of vector B parallel to vector A. Or it will be equals to A bracket B cos theta. Or we can use also for the physical meaning of scalar product by using this A and B vector alright so now we draw the line from A to the B then here we have the A cos theta where the A cos theta here is the component of vector A parallel to vector B. Now we can rewrite the equation here. The vector B dot vector A equals to B bracket A cos theta. Now we can conclude that the form of the scalar product a or vector A dot vector B equals to vector B dot vector A equals to A B cos theta. The scalar product will result in a scalar quantity. The angle theta ranges from 0 to 180 degrees. When the theta in between 0 to 90 degrees, the scalar product is positive. When the theta is in between 90 degrees, 
280 degrees, the scalar product is negative. But then, when theta is 90 degrees, the scalar product is zero. Example of scalar products is work done. Where the form of work done is W equals to vector F dot vector S equals to F bracket S cos theta or can be written also as S F cos theta. Now how about the vector of cross product? The form of cross products is the form of magnitude of vector A cross vector B equals to A bracket B sin theta equals to B bracket A sin theta. Okay. The direction of cross product is determined by Kroger method or right hand rule. The vector product is defined as vector A cross vector B equals to vector C. Here. And the method for the vector C is written as magnitude of vector A cross magnitude of vector B equals to magnitude of vector C. Okay. And the last one we can have, the equation will be here, the AB sin theta. Where the theta here is the angle between those two vectors. Angle theta from 0 to 180 degrees, the vector product is always positive. Vector product resulting a vector quantity. The direction of vector C is determined by using the right hand grip rule. Okay. <clears throat> How to identify the physical meaning of vector product? Okay, look at the figure 1.2D. 1.3 we have two vectors vector A and vector B here and we have the theta theta is the angle between those two vectors okay so we must put the line okay from B here until it is here so we can have the B sin theta where the B sin theta here is the component of vector B perpendicular to vector A. Okay. Now, we can rewrite the equation here. The magnitude of vector A cross vector B equals to A, B, C, theta. Okay. On the other hand, we can have the other method, okay, here, okay, <coughs> we have the A sin theta, where the A sin theta here is the component of A, vector A, perpendicular to vector B. And then we can rewrite the equation here, the magnitude of vector B cross Vector A equals to B A sin theta. Now we can conclude that the physical meaning of the vector product here is we can write by using this equation or form magnitude of vector A cross magnitude of vector B equals to vector B cross vector A equals to A B sin theta or B A sin theta.
how to determine the direction of the cross product. We will use the <coughs> right hand rule by pointing the four fingers to the direction of the first vector and then swap the four fingers from the first vector towards the second vector and the thumb will show the direction of vector product. So in form of vector A cross vector B equals to vector C. Okay, look at here. Right. So this is the first condition or situation where the vector A is out of pitch, B is along the X exists. Then we can have the product for the vector A cross vector B is vector C here to the top. The other one is if the vector A and vector B okay, so for the vector B cross vector A equals to vector C so the products of vector C is downward. So please then Take note that the vector A cross vector B is not equal with the vector B cross vector A. But the A, the vector A cross vector B equals to minus bracket vector B cross vector A. Direction of vector products, this vector C, always perpendicular to the plane that containing the vector A and vector B. Okay. That's all for today. Thank you very much. The second chapter will be the kinematics of linear motion. Good luck. Thank you.